Amartya Sen Amartya Kumar Sen, is an Indian economist who since 1972 has taught and worked in the United Kingdom and the United States. He has made contributions to welfare economics, social choice theory, economic and social justice, economic theories of famines, and indexes of the measure of well-being of citizens of developing countries. He was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 1998 for his work in welfare economics. He is currently the Thomas W. Lamont University Professor and Professor of Economics and Philosophy at Harvard University. He is also a Senior Fellow at the Harvard Society of Fellows, Distinguished Fellow of All Souls College, Oxford and a Fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge, where he previously served as Master from 1998 to 2004. Sen's books have been translated into more than 30 languages over a period of 40 years. Early Life and Education Sen was born in Santinai Ketan, West Bengal, India, to Ashutosh Sen and his wife Amita. Rabindranath Tagore is said to have given Amartya Sen his name, Bengali Amartya Yamato, Lit Immortal. Sen's family was originally from Wari, Dhaka, in present-day Bangladesh, and both of his parents were born in Maniganj, Dhaka. His father Ashutosh Sen was a professor of chemistry at Dhaka University who moved with his family to West Bengal during the partition of India and worked at various educational institutions, eventually becoming chairman of the West Bengal Public Service Commission. Sen's mother Amita Sen was the daughter of Kshiti Mohan Sen, a scholar and close associate of Rabindranath Tagore who became the second vice-chancellor of Visvabharati University. She was also first cousin, through her father, of Sukhuma Sen, ICS the first chief election commissioner of India, Ashok Kumar Sen, MP and sometime union law minister, and Amir Sen, a distinguished barrister. Sen began his high school education at St. Gregory's School in Dhaka in 1941. After his family moved to West Bengal following the partition of the country in 1947, he studied at Visvabharati University School and then at Presidency College, Kolkata, where he earned a first class first in his BA, Honours, in Economics, awarded by the University of Calcutta. The same year, 1953, he moved to Trinity College, Cambridge, where he earned a first class, start first, MA, Honours in 1956. He was elected president of the Cambridge Maley. While still an undergraduate student of Trinity, he met the economist Prasanta Chandra Mahalanobis, the principal architect of India's, later much reviled, economic policy based on the Soviet model of nationalized heavy industry. Mahalanobis, who was much impressed with Sen, returned to Calcutta and immediately recommended the brilliant Cambridge undergraduate to Triguna Sen the then Education Minister of West Bengal, who had been instrumental in turning the National Council into the new Jadevo University. After Sen completed his Tripos examination and enrolled for a PhD in Economics at Trinity College, Cambridge, he returned to India on a two-year leave. Triguna Sen immediately appointed him Professor and Founding Head of Department of Economics at Jadevo University, Calcutta. Something quite extraordinary because Sen had hardly even begun his PhD studies at Trinity and was 23 years of age. This still remains the youngest age at which anybody has been appointed to a professorship or a head of departmentship in India. During his tenure at Jadevo University, Sen had economic methodologist A. K. Dasgupta, who was then teaching at Banaras Hindu University, as his supervisor. After two full years of full time teaching in Jadevo, Sen returned to Cambridge in 1959 to complete his PhD. Subsequently, Sen won a prize fellowship at Trinity College, which gave him four years of freedom to do anything he liked. He took the radical decision of studying philosophy. That proved to be of immense help to his later research. Sen related the importance of studying philosophy thus, the broadening of my studies into philosophy was important for me not just because some of my main areas of interest in economics relate quite closely to philosophical disciplines, for example, social choice theory makes intense use of mathematical logic and also draws on moral philosophy, and so does the study of inequality and deprivation, but also because I found philosophical studies very rewarding on their own. 
However, his deep interest in philosophy can be dated back to his college days in presidency, when he both read books on philosophy and debated philosophical themes. To Sen, Cambridge was like a battlefield. There were major debates between supporters of Keynesian economics on the one hand, and the neoclassical economists skeptical of Keynes, on the other. Sen was lucky to have close relations with economists on both sides of the divide. Meanwhile, thanks to its good practice of democratic and tolerant social choice, Sen's own college, Trinity College, was an oasis very much removed from the discord. However, because of a lack of enthusiasm for social choice theory whether in Trinity or Cambridge, Sen had to choose a quite different subject for his PhD thesis, after completing his BA. He submitted his thesis on the choice of techniques in 1959 under the supervision of the brilliant but vigorously intolerant post-Keynesian, Joan Robinson. According to Quentin Skinner, Sen was a member of the Secret Society Cambridge Apostles during his time at Cambridge. Professorships Between 1960 and 1961, Sen was a visiting professor at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He was also a visiting professor at UC Berkeley, Stanford, and Cornell. He has taught economics also at the University of Calcutta and at the Delhi School of Economics, where he completed his magnum opus Collective Choice and Social Welfare in 1970, where he was a professor from 1961 to 1972, a period which is considered to be a golden period in the history of DSE. In 1972, he joined the London School of Economics as a professor of economics where he taught until 1977. From 1977 to 1986 he taught at the University of Oxford, where he was first a professor of economics at Nuffield College, Oxford and then the Drummond Professor of Political Economy and a Fellow of All Souls College, Oxford. In 1986, he joined Harvard as the Thomas W. Lamont University Professor of Economics. In 1998 he was appointed as Master of Trinity College, Cambridge. In January 2004, Sen returned to Harvard. He is also a contributor to the Eva Colony Trust at the former London Guildhall University. In June 2005 he received an Honorary Doctor of Economics, Politics and International Institutions degree from University of Pavia. Membership and Associations he has served as president of the Econometric Society, 1984, the International Economic Association, 1986 to 1989, the Indian Economic Association, 1989, and the American Economic Association, 1994. He has also served as president of the Development Studies Association, 1980 to 1982, and is an honorary vice president of the Royal Economic Society which he has been since 1988. He presently serves as Honorary Director of Center for Human and Economic Development Studies at Peking University in China and is also a Board Council Member of the Prime Minister of India's Global Advisory Council of Overseas Indians. Research Sen's papers in the late 1960s and early 1970s helped develop the theory of social choice, which first came to prominence in the work by the American economist Kenneth Arrow, who, while working at the Rand Corporation, had most famously shown that all voting rules, be they majority rule or two-thirds majority or status quo, must inevitably conflict with some basic democratic norm. Sen's contribution to the literature was to show under what conditions Arrow's impossibility theorem would indeed come to pass as well as to extend and enrich the theory of social choice informed by his interests in the history of economic thought and philosophy. In 1981, Sen published Poverty and Famines, an essay on entitlement and deprivation, 1981, a book in which he argued that famine occurs not only from a lack of food, but from inequalities built into mechanisms for distributing food. Sen also argued that the Bengal famine was caused by an urban economic boom that raised food prices thereby causing millions of rural workers to starve to death when their wages did not keep up. Sen's interest in famine stemmed from personal experience. As a nine-year-old boy, he witnessed the Bengal famine of 1943, in which three million people perished. This staggering loss of life was unnecessary, Sen later concluded. 
he presents data that there was an adequate food supply in Bengal at the time, but particular groups of people including rural landless laborers and urban service providers like haircutters did not have the monetary means to acquire food as its price rose rapidly due to factors that include British military acquisition, panic buying, hoarding, and price gouging, all connected to the war in the region. In Poverty and Famines, Sen revealed that in many cases of famine, food supplies were not significantly reduced. In Bengal, for example, food production, while down on the previous year, was higher than in previous non-famine years. Thus, Sen points to a number of social and economic factors, such as declining wages, unemployment, rising food prices, and poor food distribution systems. These issues led to starvation among certain groups in society. His capabilities approach focuses on positive freedom, a person's actual ability to be or do something, rather than on negative freedom approaches, which are common in economics and simply focuses on non-interference. In the Bengal famine, rural laborers' negative freedom to buy food was not affected. However, they still starved because they were not positively free to do anything they did not have the functioning of nourishment, nor the capability to escape morbidity. In addition to his important work on the causes of famines, Sen's work in the field of development economics has had considerable influence in the formulation of the Human Development Report, published by the United Nations Development Programme. This annual publication that ranks countries on a variety of economic and social indicators owes much to the contributions by Sen among other social choice theorists in the area of economic measurement of poverty and inequality. Sen's revolutionary contribution to development economics and social indicators is the concept of capability developed in his article Equality of What. He argues that governments should be measured against the concrete capabilities of their citizens. This is because top-down development will always trump human rights as long as the definition of terms remains in doubt, is a right something that must be provided or something that simply cannot be taken away? For instance, in the United States citizens have a hypothetical right to vote. To Sen, this concept is fairly empty. In order for citizens to have a capacity to vote, they first must have functionings. These functionings can range from the very broad, such as the availability of education, to the very specific, such as transportation to the poles. Only when such barriers are removed can the citizen truly be said to act out of personal choice. It is up to the individual society to make the list of minimum capabilities guaranteed by that society. For an example of the capabilities approach in practice, see Martha Nussbaum's Women and Human Development. He wrote a controversial article in the New York Review of Books entitled More Than 100 Million Women Are Missing, See Missing Women of Asia, Analyzing the Mortality Impact of Unequal Rights Between the Genders in the Developing World, Particularly Asia. Other studies, such as one by Emily Oster, have argued that this is an overestimation, though Oster has recanted some of her conclusions. Welfare economics seeks to evaluate economic policies in terms of their effects on the well-being of the community. Sen, who devoted his career to such issues, was called the conscience of his profession. His influential monograph Collective Choice and Social Welfare, 1970, which addressed problems related to individual rights, including formulation of the liberal paradox, justice and equity, majority rule and the availability of information about individual conditions, inspired researchers to turn their attention to issues of basic welfare. Sen devised methods of measuring poverty that yielded useful information for improving economic conditions for the poor. For instance, his theoretical work on inequality provided an explanation for why there are fewer women than men in India and China despite the fact that in the West and in poor but medically unbiased countries, Women have lower mortality rates at all ages, live longer, and make a slight majority of the population. Sen claimed that this skewed ratio results from the better health treatment and childhood opportunities afforded boys in those countries, as well as sex-specific abortion. Governments and international organizations handling food crises were influenced by Sen's work. His views encouraged policymakers to pay attention not only to alleviating immediate suffering but also to finding ways to replace the lost income of the poor, as, for example, through public works projects, 
and to maintain stable prices for food. A vigorous defender of political freedom, Sen believed that famines do not occur in functioning democracies because their leaders must be more responsive to the demands of the citizens. In order for economic growth to be achieved, he argued, social reforms, such as improvements in education and public health, must precede economic reform. In 2009, a new book by Sen was published, The Idea of Justice. Based on his previous work in welfare economics and social choice theory, but also on his philosophical thoughts, he presented his own theory of justice that he meant to be an alternative to the influential modern theories of justice of John Rawls or John Harzano. In opposition to Rawls but also earlier justice theoreticians Immanuel Kant, Jean-Jacques Rousseau or David Hume, and inspired by the philosophical works of Adam Smith and Mary Wollstonecraft, Sen developed a theory that is both comparative and realizations-oriented, instead of being transcendental and institutional. However, he still regards institutions and processes as being important. As an alternative to Rawls's veil of ignorance, Sen chose the thought experiment of an impartial spectator as the basis of his theory of justice. He also stressed the importance of public discussion, understanding democracy in the sense of John Stuart Mill, and a focus on people's capabilities, an approach that he had co-developed, including the notion of universal human rights, in evaluating various states with regard to justice. Perceptions, in comparisons Sen has been called the conscience and the Mother Teresa of economics for his work on famine, human development theory, welfare economics, the underlying mechanisms of poverty, gender inequality, and political liberalism. However, he denies the comparison to Mother Teresa by saying that he has never tried to follow a lifestyle of dedicated self-sacrifice. Amartya Sen also added his voice to the campaign against Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. India, University Mentor for Growth and Revival Nalanda International University Project In May 2007, he was appointed by the Government of India as Chairman of Nalanda Mentor Group to examine the framework of international cooperation, and proposed structure of partnership, which would govern the establishment of Nalanda International University Project as an international centre of education seeking to revive the ancient centre of higher learning which was present in India from the 5th century to 1197. On 19th July 2012, Nobel laureate Amartya Sen was named the first chancellor of the proposed Nalanda University, NU. Presidency College, Kolkata In June 2011, he was appointed as the advisor to the mentor group of Presidency College by West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee. Media and Popular Culture a 57-minute documentary named Amartya Sen, A Life Re-Examined, directed by Suman Nosh, details his life and work. Personal Life and Beliefs Sen has been married three times. His first wife was Nobanita Dev Sen, an Indian writer and scholar, by whom he had two daughters, Antara, a journalist and publisher, and Nandana, a Bollywood actress. Their marriage broke up shortly after they moved to London in 1971. In 1973, Sen married his second wife, Eva Colony, who died from stomach cancer in 1985. He has two children by Eva, a daughter Indrani, who is a journalist in New York, and a son Kabir, who teaches music at Shady Hill School. In 1991, Sen married his present wife, Emma Georgina Rothschild. They have no children together. Sen maintains a house in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where he and Emma spend the spring and long vacations. He usually spends his winter holidays at his home in Santa Niketan in West Bengal, India, where he likes to go on long bike rides. Asked how he relaxes, he replies, I read a lot and like arguing with people. Sen is an atheist and holds that this can be associated with Hinduism as a political entity. In an interview for the magazine California, which is published by the University of California, Berkeley, he noted. Academic Achievements, Awards, and Honors 
Sen has received over 90 honorary degrees from universities around the world. 1954 He received the Adam Smith Prize. 1981 He was elected a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. 1982 He was awarded honorary fellowship by the Institute of Social Studies. 1998 he received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences for his work in welfare economics. 1999, he received the Bharat Ratna the highest civilian award in India by the President of India. 1999, he was offered the honorary citizenship of Bangladesh by Sheikh Hasina in recognition of his achievements in winning the Nobel Prize, and given that his ancestral origins were in what has become the modern state of Bangladesh. 2000, he was awarded the Order of Companion of Honor, UK. 2000, he received Le Montieve Prize for his outstanding contribution to economic theory from the Global Development and Environment Institute. 2000, he was awarded the Eisenhower Medal for Leadership and Service USA. 2000, he was the 351st commencement speaker of Harvard University. 2002, he received the International Humanist Award from the International Humanist and Ethical Union. 2003, he was conferred the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Indian Chamber of Commerce. He is awarded the Lifetime Achievement Award by Bangkok-based United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, UNESCAP. 2005, Honorary Degree, University of Pavia. 2010, he was chosen to deliver the Demos Annual Lecture 2010. 2011, the National Humanities Medal was given to Sen. 2012, Sash in a special category Order of the Aztec Eagle. 2013, he was made a Commander of the French Legion of Honor. 2013, the 25 Greatest Global Living Legends in India by NDTV. Publications 1960. Choice of Techniques. 1962. An Aspect of Indian Agriculture. Economic Weekly, v. 14, 1970a. The Impossibility of a Parisian Liberal, Journal of Political Economy, 78, 1, pages 152 to 157, 1970b. Collective Choice and Social Welfare, Holden Day. Elsevier, 1984, with minor corrections. Description, 1973. On Economic Inequality, New York, Norton. 1997 Expanded Edition. Description, 1976. Poverty, an Ordinal Approach to Measurement, Econometrica, 44, 2, pages 219 to 231, 1980. The Quality of What? In the Tanner Lectures on Human Values, v. 1, pages 197 to 220. Utah UP and Cambridge UP, 1981. Poverty and Famines, an Essay on Entitlements and Deprivation, Oxford, Clarendon Press. Description and Chapter Preview Links, 1982. Choice, Welfare and Measurement, Harvard UP and Oxford, Basil Blackwell. Description and CH. Preview Links. Review Extract, 1984. Resources, Values, and Development, Harvard University Press. Reprinted 1997 Description, 1985 a, 1999. Commodities and Capabilities, Elsevier, Oxford. Description and TOC. Review Extract, 1986A. Food Economics and Entitlements, Helsinki, Wider Working Paper 1, 1986b, Social Choice Theory. In Handbook of Mathematical Economics, v. 3, ch. 2, pages 1073 to 1181. doi, 10.1016 per second 1573 4382, 86, 03004 7, 1987. On Ethics and Economics, Oxford, Basil Blackwell. Description, 1989. Hunger and Public Action, Edward Jean Dries, Oxford, Clarendon Press. Description, 1990. More than 100 million women are missing. New York Review of Books, 1992. Inequality Reexamined, Harvard UP and Oxford UP Description and Chapter Preview Links, 
1992. The Quality of Capacity, Reference Shortened Version of Sen, 1992, Sect. 1.1-2, and 1980, Sect. 3-4, 1993. The Quality of Life, Ed with Martha Nussbaum, Oxford, Clarendon Press. Description and Chapter Preview Links, 1995. India, Economic Development and Social Opportunity, with Jean Dries, 1997. Social Choice Reexamined, ed., with Kenneth J. Arrow and Kotero Suzumura, ed., Tuval, Palgrave Macmillan. Description, 1998. The Possibility of Social Choice, Nobel Lecture, 1999A. Reason Before Identity, The Romans Lecture for 1998, Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-951389-9 Description, 1999b. Development is Freedom, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Review in Asia Times, 2000. Freedom, Rationality, and Social Choice, The Arrow Lectures and Other Essays, 2002. Rationality and Freedom, Harvard, Belknot Press. Description and Table of Contents Links and Preview, 2002, 2011. Handbook of Social Choice and Welfare, ed., with Kenneth Arrow and Kotero Suzumura, Elsevier. Description and Chapter Preview Links, v. 1 and 2, 2005. The Argumentative Indian, London, Alan Lane. Reviews in The Guardian and The Washington Post, 2005. The Three Hours of Reform, Economic and Political Weekly, 40, 19, pages 1971 to 1974, 2006. Identity and Violence, The Illusion of Destiny, Issues of Our Time, New York, W. W. Norton, 2007. Imperial Illusions, India, Britain, and the Wrong Lestins, The New Republic, December 31, 2008. A. Justice, The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics, 2nd edition. Abstract and TOC, 2008 b. Social Choice, The New Palgrave Dictionary of Economics, 2nd edition. Abstract and TOC, 2009. The Idea of Justice, Harvard University Press and Alan Lane. Description and, at bottom, chapter preview links, 2010. Mismeasuring Our Lives, Why GDP Doesn't Add Up, with Joseph E. Stiglitz and John Paul Fitusi. ISBN 978-1-59558-519-6, The New Press. Description and Preview, 2011. Peace and Democratic Society. Cambridge, Open Book Publishers, Other Publications on Google Scholar, 2013 An Uncertain Glory. India and its Contradictions. 